Hello, welcome back. My name is Kelsey and this is part two of the Honesdale interior design series. If you haven't already seen part one, I would totally recommend watching that first just so you can get a better sense of what the project's about. You get to see what the existing building looks like and just overall know what the hell I'm talking about. In today's video, I'm gonna be covering two things. The first is 3D renderings. I'll be showing you a basic overview on how I create 3D realistic renderings. And the second is the overall project concept. I want to make this intro quick, which it never is, but I just quickly want to say two things before I do get into the video. First, I want to thank everyone who's been showing me love and support for this video series and for the project, especially after I dropped the part one video. Thank you to all of you, especially Mike, my client, and everybody in Honesdale who has been so accepting and supportive of us. I also want to shout out Mocha Origins for letting us come to your headquarters. We had an amazing time touring your shop and where you make everything and just we had so much coffee and chocolate. Oh my god, it was so it was so amazing. So if you are in the Honesdale, Pennsylvania area, I would highly, highly, highly recommend you go check them out. And finally, I want to give a quick disclaimer. This entire design video series is my creative work, my vlog, my blog, my hobby, literally whatever you want to call it. And its main purpose is to showcase me and my talents as a designer, as a video creator, and as a creative artist in general, and it's also meant to give my subscribers an in-depth look into an actual interior design project from start to finish. It is not intended to advertise or shame or be a full-on documentary of this project or of the town itself, even though many of you may see it that way. This is a personal piece of artwork that is my opinions, my research, my words that are coming out of my mouth and anything that I say or the information that I give is very authentic to who I am as a person as well as my humor and and however I choose to deliver that. And if you are offended by my humor, then stop watching this video because you ain't gonna like it. When I originally wrote this disclaimer, it was a lot more sympathetic and smiley and um, apologetic and I was gonna say sorry at the end, but I am never going to apologize for being myself, damn it. I also wanna make it very clear that my client and I are not wealthy real estate moguls. We don't own multiple properties. We do not fly in private jets, only in my dreams, of course. And we don't seek out businesses to flip or flop. He is a 20 something father from Long Island that I met in high school who is, I mean, really just still a kid himself. No offense, Mike. <laughs> and I am a 20 something low level interior designer who probably has way less idea of what she's doing than it actually appears. Trust me. And I hope the people of Honesdale who are watching this which is probably a lot of you because I, be, I, I read the comments, to give us the same benefit of the doubt that we are giving to you. Now, with all of that negative energy leaving my body, let's get right into part two of the Honesdale interior design series. Roll the clip. renderings, I mean those three-dimensional, like, realistic-looking pictures that interior designers will create for clients in order to give them a realistic perspective in general about what the actual space is going to look like. Typically, these come as the very last step of a project because, you know, you need to, like, des de design the whole project first. But my client actually wanted these done first because he wanted to use these images for his website in order to market the offices and the office space before the project actually opened. This means that these renderings are totally made up. Everything's made up and the points don't matter. Just like government and money and time. I'm basically just freehanding in here and creating a photo that's gonna look nice to the customers and to my client and just just so they, so they look good and people wanna buy it. Because this is not meant to be a technical video, I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how I specifically do this, but if this is something that you are interested in seeing in the future, I don't really know what kind of people are watching my videos. I, I kinda got like a whole 
spectrum of viewers at this point. Uh, I don't really know, don't really know what my demographic is yet. The client has asked for three different renderings, a view of the open collaboration and conference area and two office views, one of a slightly lower priced office and one of a higher priced office that is in a prime location. When I visited the site, I first surveyed the space, which means I spent several hours of my day measuring the entire space with a laser measurer, 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 measurer and a tape measure, measuring every every nook and cranny and wall and ceiling so I can accurately draw an existing floor plan. Shout out to Pasquale for helping me do this, even though you helping probably made the process twice as long, I still appreciate it nonetheless. I brought a rough sketch of what the floor plans look like with me to the site so that every time I took a measurement, I would just write it down on this mock-up floor plan. And then later on, I would go in and draw the floor plan that was super, super accurate or at least as accurate as I can get. I need to measure everything. Heights of doors and windows, overall sizes of the rooms. I also need to document all of the finishes in the space, so I brought my camera with me and I took photos of walls, floors, countertops, and especially a lot of the existing furniture that was in there because we actually might be using some of it for the future space. And reusing as much furniture as we can is another great way to keep costs down. Now that the survey is done, it's time for me to draw the floor plan in the form of a 3D model. Now let's head over to my desk and do it now! Welcome to my desk. This is my desk where I do desk things. Once I have all the measurements measured, I'm then going to use a program called Revit to start building the model and creating the floor plan. In this program, I can draw walls, doors, really everything. My goal is to make the model as accurate as possible so that I don't need to make multiple trips to the space, which is great because it takes me about four hours to get there from here one direction and I drive there and back in the same day and it is a lot. But you know what? It's good alone time and good thinking time and I really need more days where I can be alone. I can refer to the model for everything that I need, like dimensions and such. Because I'm only gonna be rendering those three areas, the two offices and the collaboration conference room, I don't need to build the whole model right now. I can do that later. I just need to build those three little sections that are gonna be shown in the renderings. I'm adding in whatever furniture that I want, which actually might not even be the actual furniture. Like I said, we're making this all up as we go along. I haven't actually designed the space yet. So these are placeholders and they're just here to look nice and I'm changing around some of the materials. When people ask me what my number one tip is to get your renderings to look as photorealistic as possible, I tell them it's all in the materials. If your materials that you're placing on the wall and the furniture, etc., are exact to size and they have the correct attributes and textures and they either absorb or reflect light in the way that they're actually supposed to in real life, that's gonna give you the most realistic view. I would say materiality and then lighting is number second. Okay, now that everything is rendered in Revit, I'm then gonna use a plugin called Enscape to actually do rendering of the view or the processing of this 3D model into a 2D image. You can render directly in Revit, but in my experience, Enscape is the best plugin to use. Uh, I already said that this is not gonna be a technical video and I'm using terminology that you average viewer are not gonna know diddly squat what it means or what it's about. So I'm just gonna keep talking. Once I'm in Enscape, I'm now gonna play around with the location of the sun. You can see how the lighting changes in the interior depending on the time of day and how much light's coming through the windows. Okay, I've created the first round of views without any post-production or anything. So now we're just gonna send these out to the client. We're gonna get his thoughts and his approval, and then we're gonna come back and we'll do some post-production. 12 seconds later. His response overall was very positive. That's fantastic for me. <laughs> Thank goodness. His one comment was to change the chairs to something a little more comfortable. He doesn't want this to feel like a super like sterile office. He wants this to feel like a fun, a fun office, like not a regular office, like a cool office. And that is no problem. That's an easy fix. 20 minutes later. I then got full approval of the furniture and now we are gonna move on to the last step, which is our accessories and post-production. I'm using the Enscape library to add the accessories like books on the shelves and laptops, decor, plants, coffee cups on the table. It's like these little things that are really gonna make the rendering look like it's lived in, like it's real, like people are actually using it. Then I head into Photoshop and I add just the finishing touches, which is gonna be 
um, adjusting the colors and the lighting, adding people. Although my client initially said he didn't want people in the view, I did a version with people and a version without people, and then he can decide if he wants to use it or not. It didn't really take me that long, so we're just gonna send them both. And this is how the final renderings turned out. Overall, I was happy with these and so was my client. So it's a win-win. And like not to toot my own horn or anything, but like I feel like these are like the best that I've ever done. <laughs> Good job, me. Good job. Now back to you, Kelsey. There are a lot of ways that you can create a design concept and it all really depends on the project itself. If you want a more in-depth look at how to create a concept image board and also a concept in general, go look at the first video on YouTube I ever posted. It is extremely embarrassing and I look so stupid and I sound like a robot. Enjoy. Sometimes it's derived from visual cues such as an aesthetic or a color, a piece of furniture. Sometimes it's related to the geography of the surrounding area and sometimes it's about the people who will inhabit the space. For this project, I've created a few key themes. These themes or design concepts will essentially be the starting point for all major design decisions throughout the entire project. Let me give you an example. If we chose movement as an overarching concept for the entire project, we would select a piece of fabric and we would say, I selected this piece of fabric because the patterns or the textures or the colors create movement or were inspired by movement or look like they are moving or something else that has to do with with movement. You, you get the idea. And this relates directly back to our concept. I talk with my hands a lot. Wow. Before I even get into my design concept though, I first create an overall goal for the project. This will tie everything together and also remind me and my client throughout the process what the mission is. For this project, the overall project concept is to attract locals of all ages and young entrepreneurs, foster a community and culture, and promote the revitalization of Honesdale while maintaining its historic charm. I then go deeper into the design concepts, which will inform the specific ways or the specific techniques that we're gonna use in order to achieve that goal. Those themes are historic charm, celebrating the local architecture and taking cues from Honesdale's history local insights, infusing unique local art and craft into the design of each space, and old versus new, the fusing of historic authenticity with modernity while bringing the space into the 21st century. Final step of the concept phase is imagery. This is when we can kind of gauge what aesthetically the client had in mind and actually start brainstorming what this place is going to look like. I've created one overall imagery board, which is going to be the overall aesthetic for the entire project. Here I've added a combination of rustic and industrial images that will speak to the authenticity of the building and the urban look that the client initially wanted to go for with some slightly more refined details and like more modern furniture. I'm thinking if we maintain the rustic and authenticity of the architecture, then a good place for us to bring a little modernity is gonna be in the furniture. Next, I've separated each space in order to create an individual mood board for each. So to clarify, we've got one inspiration board that's going to cover the entire concept, the general aesthetic of the project, and then we've got a couple different smaller imagery boards that are going to speak specifically to each space. Are you following me? Are you sure? I won't go into too much detail and bore you while I talk about every single image. But overall, the first floor, which is the coffee shop and the burger cafe, will look a little bit more rustic, industrial, and eclectic. And the upstairs, a little bit more refined and simple because it is the co-working space upstairs. One image that really actually jumped out to my client was the image of the ticker board. If you watched episode one of this series, you'll know that Honesdale has a very long yet very short history with the train. So one of my initial ideas was to create a like train style ticker board as the coffee shop menu signage. Since the building itself will be called the creative compound to attract young and local entrepreneurs, I'd like to add pops of color everywhere that I can, especially upstairs. My thoughts are doing this through either pops of color uh, on the furniture or as murals on the walls. Although I would like to make as many walls as possible, either writable or tackable for people to kind of put up their own content and put up their own artwork and showcase it throughout the space. I would potentially like to make room for a local artist to come in 
in and either do like a painting or some kind of mural on the wall or maybe paint some of our signage. And that is everything for the concept phase of this project. The client did in fact approve of the entire concept package and everything that I showed. So we are going to be moving on to the next phase of this project and part three of the video design series, which is schematic design and furniture planning. So if you're interested in seeing what comes next, then you're going to have to subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell to be notified the next time that I post a video because I'm not consistent. Thank you again for watching and I hope you have an amazing rest of your week or weekend or day or, or life. Have a good life. Bye. Thanks. Welcome back to my channel. Hit that smash that like button and subscribe. Comment down below what was your favorite chocolate of today. Anyways, catch you guys on the next one. Woo! That is that. That's staying in there. That's my ending. <laughs> <laughs>